Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Just uh, gonna let some B-roll footage here roll in the beginning. Uh, I know I haven't updated the channel in a while, probably about a month or so, but uh, I took some time to just kind of keep to myself, focus on flying, and also my son was out uh, with me for about a week for his spring break. But anyway, so this video, uh, we took off to a local gravel bar or a sandbar, uh, and I uh, just wanna go over some things that I learned about flying into sandbars. Ultimately, the Cub is not the best airplane to do sandbar with or sandbar flying with but it's doable uh, you need to know what you're doing with the airplane and you need to make sure you're within weight limits now luckily with a six-year-old who only weighs 45 pounds or so uh, this isn't a big issue but there's some, definitely some performance stuff uh, with the cub uh, getting in and out but anyway so let's go over that further okay this is the sandbar location here that uh, I ultimately ended up flying and landing into there were some severe thunderstorms, uh, probably about 25 to 30 miles south of this location, which is in the Arkansas River, just north of Oxford, Kansas. And you'll notice here that on the Google images, it shows a relatively long sandbar. In the bottom left corner of that, you'll see a section of vegetation that extends out halfway into the sandbar. Now, this provides a couple of different options, but as you'll see here coming up in the next photo, it's actually not as bad as you think. Okay, so here you can see on the left side, pretty much like mid-level of the photo, the gravel bar or sandbar is relatively straight. It gives enough uh, distance for me to get in and get out. And there are a couple of things to keep in mind, is that there's a vegetation uh, and like a little cliff pretty much near the water's edge. And you can see here where there's a black line essentially at the top of the sandbar that kind of curves around like a J. That is also a lip. Now, a couple of things to note is that in landing in sand, it is very difficult to identify the change in, in microterrain. So you may have like six inches or a foot like cliff or step up. Uh, and you'll see here in the upcoming video why this is important. And all right, as like I said, I mentioned, we'll go over the FAA off airport ops guide. Uh, there are a few things in here that we should cover before we get into some extra video. Okay, the airport guide or off airports guide says operating off airport requires high performance from pilot and aircraft and acquiring the knowledge and experience to conduct these operations safely takes time. Now, I really want to stress how important that is. And essentially what this is saying is you need the experience to go in and do these things. And here's the one issue from my side of the field, okay? There's not too many pilots in Kansas that are fighting these off airport spots. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and typically, even if I do know some guys, they're usually busy. So I'm learning these areas as I go and I'm learning this kind of by the seat of my pants. Do I recommend you do it this way? No, I don't. I recommend you go find someone to take the courses with and you learn. However, in this particular case, I'm taking my time and exercising extreme caution. Now, why this is important for me to exercise extreme caution should be obvious to everyone, but just in case, let's cover just the simple basic stuff is if I'm not cautious, ultimately I could crash my airplane. Crash my airplane, not good. If I have a passenger in there, and something goes wrong. I really don't have anyone to come and recover me, you know, or, or come and assist. No one really knows how to get into these places, and some of these places don't really have a road connected to them, so I really am by myself. Okay, going back to reference the off airports guide, on the landing and approaches, it makes three recommendations. That you should make a high level, an intermediate, and low level pass or inspection. For the high level, it recommends that you basically go from both sides or check out the whole vicinity and you should be observing, observing things like vegetation, uh, how the water is drifting, uh, dust is moving, anything that you can visually see over the ground and determine the wind direction. And while it doesn't say that in this publication, there is one difficult issue with this, is the speed of the aircraft moving about at the high level and your distance to the ground. It's proportionate to size and distance, right? So am I going to be able to see dust moving around, traveling at 80 miles an hour across you know, across the top of the trees? Probably not. And the Cub also presents a little bit of an issue. Is in the back seat when I'm flying solo, or if I'm in the back seat with a passenger up front, it is very difficult for me to see to the 12 o'clock of the aircraft or even to the left side, uh, you know, at say, you know, 200 degrees or so. Uh, it's easier for me to see on the right side, and in order to do that, I have to open up the door to see. All right, so moving on, it says you can also make a intermediate pass which is again, both in directions, or both directions, checking for obstructions along the runway, such as rocks, trees, etc. You're looking specifically for the rock sizes, but in this case, we don't have to worry about it too much because it's 
on sand. And you should be, and it says here, note the location of the touchdown area and rollout area, all right? That's a little bit difficult to do other than identify just, hey, here's where I want to put it down, and I think I'm going to roll out this far, okay? And it says here to make sure you have a good side picture to be used on final approach. Again, a little bit difficult in the Cub, but doable. And it does make a mention of the time of the day and shadows, but we aren't too really worried about that. So moving on to low level. Low level says to make a pass for uh, to check for cuts in gravel, rocks, dips, bumps, etc. Dips and bumps, and you'll see why this is important here in a minute when we go over actual uh, GoPro footage, because it is very difficult to see dips. And it says they can't be seen from directly above. You pretty much can't even see them, especially in sand, unless you hit it. And it says it's important to be at an angle to the runway, not above it. Certain light conditions can make a, make a, uh, a bad sight seem good. Check and double check any area not used before, or uh, check the water if, if water's changed since the last landing if you've been there, and make one pass and roll tires for a few feet to get a feel of the landing surface. Now, with this landing surface, I've landed on these sandbars before, not this particular one, so I am understanding of how the wheels will act on the sand. With the Cub, it will sink maybe an eighth of an inch on the top, but the tailwheel really digs in there, and it digs in deep, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you here uh, in a video coming up. Okay, so in this part of the video, I've already done my multiple inspection passes. I've gone north and south along the river bar, done my high, medium, and low passes, and in this, I'm finally coming in for a landing. This is my final approach. Now, what I didn't do was I didn't actually put the wheels down in this particular case. I felt pretty confident coming in that I could do this without having to touch my wheels because I knew the composition of the soil and I kind of got the layout of the gravel bar, although probably not the best. But you'll see here as I'm coming in over the water that uh, I've got quite a bit of an issue. Here I am coming over the top of the gravel bar, looking both sides, determining, and as you'll see my tailwheel coming down here, it's still slightly nose high. I'm trying to put the door down to be able to see, and I'm trying to mess with the power. Power's going full back on, and I decide not good enough, and it's time to go around. All right, this is after the climb out, and if you were to basically break this down by a modern pattern standard, this would be a left crosswind turned to left downwind. Okay, this portion of the video here is essentially left downwind, and as I'm coming down, I'm looking ahead of the aircraft, scanning right and left, observing what's going on ahead of me, and also observing my instruments. Hey, are you awake? All right, we need to pay attention because we're getting close to the ground. I need to pay. All right. Okay, really good attention. Coming here on final, you can notice that uh, coming in over the water seemed to be a little fast. I'm not quite managing my energy and my speed as I should, and I'm looking to finally put the aircraft down. But I come in a little too hot, and I bounce. I once, twice, Good, buddy. and then Good. eventually here, hit this big bump. Oh, right you there. okay? That's yeah. where I hit. That's when I knew I probably should have gone around and put my wheels down the first time. Okay. Now, initially when I hit this bump here, I actually thought I broke uh, a significant portion of the airplane. Uh, I was kind of worried at first. Uh, Atticus doesn't seem to be too worried about it, but uh, it definitely shows that you need to be managing your aircraft, and there's a fine line between managing it at stall and managing it coming in for, you know, two-point landing, which is ultimately what I was shooting for. Maybe that's one of the landings. That was a little bit of a bumpy landing, huh? Maybe that's over a big bump, right? Yep. Oh. Okay, so, I'm going to manage the aircraft more effectively coming down. Yeah, that was a big bump. It needs to be a to make sure that all of the uh, lift is bleeded, uh, bled off the wings, and you need to make sure that you stop in a reasonable amount of distance. In this particular case, I think my rollout was farther. That wheel didn't pop. This scene didn't seem too worried about it. Did it did or did not? Not. It doesn't pay okay. It's on the aircraft. So. All I right, hold on, buddy. Out. One thing you'll note here too, uh, as I'm sitting here, is that how much power I need to get the airplane. Still making tracks. Right, so hold on. 
kind of thing. them in the sand or when turning say 180 degrees but you'll notice here the sand is relatively deep when I hit the brakes or use the rudder to turn the airplane around so that'll be something coming up here in the future that I'll probably make a video about all right guys that'll do it for this video make sure you like subscribe comment follow along here in a couple weeks I'll probably have another video up uh, I've got some stuff coming up with Jonas who you've seen on the channel before thanks guys see you soon